Hey, you cryptozens. Tonight's show, Treasury Investigating Kraken, IMF Downplays Crypto Impact, Seeds Dark Days Ahead, Harmony Offer Sparks Community Backlash. It's 10 p.m. Pacific Time. The date is July 27th, 2022, and welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. My name is Nicodemus, and I'll be your host. The cover model, mascot, and co-host for this podcast is Tex. And together we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. So take a minute, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast now because we're here at 10 p.m. every night so that when you leave in the morning, you're taking with you the crypto news analysis that you need to start your day. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. The Treasury Department is investigating the crypto exchange Kraken. And by Treasury Department, I mean the Office for Foreign Assets Control. Those guys are a financial intelligence and enforcement unit in Treasury. Their whole purpose in life is to enforce economic and trade sanctions. They're under the Office of Terrorism and Financial Intelligence. Basically, when the U.S. government calls sanctions against its enemies, they're the ones checking to make sure nobody's doing business with them. Whether it's international players doing bad things like Russia, rogue nations like North Korea, or terrorist states like Iran, the OFAC is there to make sure you're not giving them any money in some way. Well, according to a Tuesday article from the New York Times, OFAC are the ones investigating Kraken for allegedly not upholding these sanctions. Iran, Syria, Cuba. They're looking at Kraken's alleged actions since 2019. My understanding is that they may be close to announcing penalties. That would be for violating U.S. sanctions by doing business with citizens from sanctioned nations. More than 1,500 of them from Iran, 149 from Syria, 83 from Cuba. So 2019 is also when Nathan Runyon filed his lawsuit against Kraken. He said there were issues such as unethical and illegal tactics, He claimed employees were defrauded over stock options, and he claims sanctions were violated. This investigation reportedly started looking at accusations about Iranians and using the website. 1,500 accounts have been identified that have residences in Iran. Marco Centauri is Kraken's chief legal officer. He said, quote, Kraken does not comment on specific discussions with regulators. Kraken has robust compliance measures in place and continues to grow its compliance team to match its business growth. Kraken closely monitors compliance with sanctions laws and, as a general matter, reports to regulators even potential issues. And this isn't the first time that Kraken's CEO, Jesse Powell, has raised eyebrows on the subject of sanctions. Powell had a six-part Twitter thread explaining to his 127,000 followers that he would not be complying with the request from the Ukrainian government. He said his exchange would not stop serving Russian clients, at least not if he has a choice. He said, quote, I understand the rationale for this request, but despite my deep respect for the Ukrainian people, Kraken cannot freeze the accounts of our Russian clients without a legal requirement to do so. Russians should be aware that such a requirement could be imminent. And even so, even with him saying without a legal requirement, that's raised questions in some quarters. Because according to a Tuesday report from the New York Times, he's made comments that others have interpreted as saying he would consider breaking the law if it paid well enough. They reportedly have Slack messages of him saying things like, quote, not following the law would be by default ill-advised, but it has always to be considered as an option. And he would consider whether it's, quote, worth the risk to not follow the legal requirement. Powell also got into it with the Canadian government during the Freedom Convoy protests back in February. In fact, they went after him for promoting self-custodial wallets at the time. And he said, basically, if the government subpoenas Kraken's customer records, Kraken would give them over. If the government ordered customer accounts frozen, he would freeze them. He advised anyone who did not want that to happen should custody their own crypto. Canadian regulators did not like that. And also earlier this month, we reported on Binance. Because Binance is also under investigation for processing trades from Iranian clients. Again, in spite of the sanctions. Now for their part, Binance put up a blog post. 
And it said the company, quote, follows international sanction rules strictly and had assembled a, quote, global compliance task force, including world-renowned sanctions and law enforcement experts. Now, remember, it was just September of last year that Kraken got in trouble with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. They handed down a $1.25 million fine for failing to register as a Futures Commission merchant. At the time of writing, the global crypto market cap is $1.05 trillion. It's up 8% in 24 hours. The top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin up 7.95%, Ethereum up 13.03%, Tether, USDC, and Binance Coin up 8.86%. There's a lot of concern among investors right now, concerns of greater volatility ahead. In the midst of that concern, the International Monetary Fund does not have a rosy forecast for the future. In fact, they're expecting for global economic growth to slow down. 3.2% this year, 2.9% next year. The IMF put out their July update on the state of the world's economy. Entitled, Gloomy and More Uncertain, it points to a couple of things that they consider indicators of poor economic growth. Those are a contraction of global output and higher than expected inflation. And they're not expecting that to change anytime soon. They said, quote, the risks to the outlook are overwhelmingly tilted to the downside. That said, the IMF seemed to be saying that crypto winter has little to no effect on other financial systems. Not the sell-offs in May, not the liquidations and bankruptcies, Celsius, Three Arrows Capital, Voyager, Lunaterra, Apparently, they have not been dangerous to financial stability. In fact, they seem not to be a threat at all. The economy is more dangerous to crypto than crypto is to the economy. The report says, quote, Crypto assets have experienced a dramatic sell-off that has led to large losses in crypto investment vehicles and caused the failure of algorithmic stablecoins and crypto hedge funds. But spillovers to the broader financial system have been limited so far which makes a degree of sense. So back in November, crypto was a $3 trillion asset class. And since that time, we've lost that mark. In fact, we lost $1 trillion market cap. We just got the $1 trillion mark back tonight, perhaps based on the 75 basis points rate hike. Again, and while all that is true, it doesn't seem to be damaging our economic strength. Now, granted, there's some disagreement about how best to measure where we are currently. Between the FOMC meeting, Meta's disappointing numbers, I'm expecting to see a huge dip in the numbers as far as Q2 GDP goes. Those numbers, the GDP numbers, that's going to be interesting. You can tell the White House is expecting abysmal numbers. They're expecting calls of recession which has sparked accusations that the White House is changing the definition of recession. Most sources define a recession as two consecutive quarters of a downward GDP. Well, a couple of days ago, Lark Davis tweeted out to his 1 million followers, quote, White House already getting in front of what must be bad data, saying it's time to change the definition. And again, their cachet, their brand may have been hurt in recent months, as we were told there was no inflation. And then that inflation would be transitory. They told us tales of soft landings that are proving not to be true. Some have suggested that they're arguing about the definition of recession so that it can't be used against Democrats in the midterm elections. The global NFT market cap is up 1.49%. Sales volume is down 4.66% in 24. According to CoinMarketCap, the top five NFT collections by sales volume are Other Deed, followed by Mutant Apes, Moonbirds, CryptoPunks, and Bored Apes. Now keep in mind, some of these collections have very volatile prices, so do your own research. Well, it was quite the hack. About a month ago, the Horizon Bridge was hacked for $100 million. North Korean hackers from the Lazarus Group exploited the bridge to the Harmony Layer 1 blockchain. $100 million in altcoins being sent to a different wallet, and then once the funds were stolen, 
they were traded for ETH on Uniswap, and then that ETH got sent back to the original wallet. Included in the stolen tokens were Frax, Wrapped Ether, Ave, SushiSwap, Frax Share, AAG, Binance USD, DAI, Tether, Wrapped Bitcoin, and USD Coin. Well, the Harmony project team has put forth a couple of proposals. It's effectively one proposal with a couple of options. And if it looks familiar, it kind of is. It's very much like what was done with Luna. And so it came to pass that after a month and a half of silence, the Harmony team broke that silence on their blog. And in that post, they talked about the state of things. They said immediate reimbursement isn't happening. They also talked about the fallout of the hack. Specifically, quote, the accruing of uncollectible loans. That's in the different DeFi projects that Harmony is involved in. The devs were a little upset at people who chose to borrow the one token and never intended to pay it back, which had a cascading effect as the loss of liquidity caused problems for their suppliers, which of course could cause Harmony to get kicked off of these projects. And included with that blog post is an FAQ covering the reasons behind the proposals. Then in their blog post, they asked the community to vote on the two proposals. As it stands, over 14 different coins were stolen, 65,000 wallets, $100 million. And to answer that, Harmony has offered to reimburse the community after a hard fork. In the details of that reimbursement are important here. I mean, how are you just going to mint some almost 5 billion tokens? I mean, without causing a huge inflationary wave, sinking the value of that token for everybody else, because that's exactly what they're proposing. They want to mint another 4.97 billion tokens and then pay those tokens out to the community over the course of three years. That'd be three years, 138 million tokens being released per month. Going at the rate of two cents per token, that's $2.76 million worth of tokens. Now, their other plan was to do the same thing but half. Instead of the full 4.97 billion tokens, they'd mint half of them, $2.48 billion. And they'd still make them available on a three-year timeline. I don't predict this will go well for Harmony. I've been looking at the Twitter thread associated with this announcement, and the commentary so far is brutal. And for good reason. This will tank the price of that coin. And as usual, the believers, the long-term hodlers, are going to be the ones to get hurt. All this is going to do is increase selling pressure on the token. As soon as people get their reimbursements, they're going to dump them. And that's going to further depress the price. Now, some folks are upset because they see this as Harmony abdicating responsibility. Not to put too fine a point on it, but it was Harmony's code. Not only that but concerns about the bridge's security were raised months before. Back in April, Twitter poster ApeDev called it out. He points out that the whole thing is protected by a multi-sig wallet with just four owners. He told his 2,000 followers, quote, So all in all, if two of the four multi-sig signers were compromised, we're going to see another nine-figure hack. That is a glaring fall. There's only four participants here, so you wouldn't even have to establish a plurality. The fact is, the team's proposal utterly ignores their own responsibility here. They failed to secure the project with substandard programming, and now their customers may well end up paying the price. Voting is due to run from August 1st to the 15th. I have a feeling it's going to be rejected, but I could be wrong. And that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. You stay safe out there. Watch out for yourselves, but watch out for each other, too. We'll see you tomorrow night.